Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, guys. It is Finance Fridays. We are live at 5 p.m. EST. Today's conversation, we're talking about business, how to manage your business finances today. Today, we have a special guest on our live who is one of my friends. He runs and owns a marketing company. So we're gonna talk a little bit about kind of managing your business finances today and kind of just have a conversation about um, what that looks like, right? What, what are we talking about today? And what are some of the things that we're doing right now in quarter four to prepare our business for the upcoming year? And I think it's super, 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 great to have you guys join us let's go ahead and bring our guest on okay so I pressed it. okay i did hey hey how you doing i'm doing good i'm doing good how are you i'm doing good too just really really busy you know but i'm doing good that's awesome, awesome. Let's give everyone a second to jump on. I'm excited to have you on here today, and I'm excited to talk. It's been a while. Uh, we conversated a little bit the other day, but I'm excited to really just have this conversation with you today. If I can get my phone to pop up for Yeah, I'm excited too for, you know, having a conversation with me. I know you're really, really busy. You've got a lot going on. Tax season is coming up very, very soon. So, you know, definitely excited to have this conversation. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about, well, first introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about what it is that you do, your company, um, and then we'll start from there. Uh, so I am Ryan McCrary, those that don't know. Did we lose him? Hey, Ryan, did we lose you? Okay, I think you're gonna need to get off and then come back on. I don't know how to take him off. Oh, there we go. go. Oh, what happened? <laughs> I don't know what happened either. So yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself, who you are, what do you do? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I am Ryan McCrary, uh, also known as the Funnel Doctor. Uh, you know me from before, from when I had a separate business doing finance and stuff like that. Most people nowadays have no idea that I had a completely different business and used to do like a lot of different stuff. Uh, but now I run a digital marketing agency. We specialize in sales funnels, landing pages, websites, and Facebook and Instagram ads. Uh, we've helped you know many different clients work with six and seven figure brands. So definitely excited to have this conversation with you see some of my folks coming on here too nice nice i'm excited to have you on here as well yes when i first met you i believe you were in the financial services industry and that's how we connected paths um what were you doing in the finance space uh basically just information products so i wrote a book you know um I was definitely selling my book i had online courses i was doing some personal coaching and that type of stuff but, you know, also just giving a lot of information on social media. So, like, doing Facebook Lives and just information, you know, stuff like that, giving tips, you know, because my uh, professional background is actually in finance. So, I worked at a few different financial companies. I had my securities licenses. You know, I was, like, a stockbroker and working with mutual funds and investments and options and different IRAs and that type of stuff. Uh, so, originally, I was just trying to teach people about uh, wealth and finance and that type of stuff because growing up, I never learned about that. My family never taught me about it. My friends never talked about it. Even nowadays, most people out here don't really know a lot about financial literacy and wealth building and investments and that type of stuff. So that's what I originally you know, wanted to do in my business. Uh, then I made a complete pivot and started the actual marketing agency. And I actually like this a lot too. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And we've been talking and discussing about um, 
marketing a lot and and let me tell you guys ryan really knows what he's doing um as we start to currently build an in-house marketing team we were always myself as the ceo of my company we we're always on the fence like do we build an in-house marketing team and keep them in-house and feed them a yearly salary and let them grow with us or do we hire a marketing agency and um have the agency do everything set everything up for us and manage it so we've kind of always gone back and forth i think there's a lot of pros and cons to each setup um and one thing that i always do is call ryan now that I, we are building out our marketing team like hey what do you think about this what do you think about that and um he's been very 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 insightful and i appreciate that um how did we meet when did we meet uh uh, I think it's probably like four or five years okay. ago now. I okay. think I'd have been through like Will Roundtree or one of them or something okay. like that. Uh, I think it was or, or Jay Morrison or something like that. I think I think it might have been through one of them people. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I was I was wondering that the other day. But for those of you that don't know who I am, maybe part of Ryan's um, audience. My name is Carmen Mohan, and I am the CEO and founder of a virtual tax and accounting firm located here in New York. We have a uh, retail storefront. And so over the course of my career and building out my business, we started here in 2014. I had purchased a tax franchise. And now as the years have gone by, one thing that I've noticed with being in the accounting industry is, you know, doing taxes is cool. Personal tax preparation is cool, too. That is kind of like the foundation of how we build our business. But where I feel like the biggest need are is now we're in this entrepreneurship like journey right everyone right now is becoming their own business owner and so it's a great thing but a lot of the times with new entrepreneurs or people in the first five years of their company they don't really know what that looks like on the back end of the management side and there's so much that goes into business development and every week we talk about managing your business finances and yes we need to understand how to manage the business finances but there's also so many more pieces and I had saw that Ephraim posted something just not too long ago and he said in order to build a strong foundation there's so many pieces of the puzzle that has to be aligned your business development is going to come from all of your pieces being aligned and that's creating your systems and processes like everyone says but what does that really mean right. it means systems and processes around managing your finances around your um, income that you're coming in around your expense around your profit margins, around is it time, when when is it time to get business funding? Are you ready for business funding? Are you eligible for business funding? And then if you do get these funds from banks or other sources, what do you do with these funds? How do you create a budget? How do you oversee that budget? And how do you implement this new set of funds that has now been, you know, um, uh, been able, been that now you have access to? And one thing to go back to my point, what I was saying, noticing in this accounting industry is that there's such a need for business owners to understand what that looks like on the business development side on the back end of things and finances is just one piece of it and it happens to be my favorite piece right i love when clients come to us in a mess and they don't know their profit margins but they're generating revenue they don't really know what to do i love to fix that mess and watch them grow so that is what i passionately do but i notice even more than that a lot of us don't know everyone says online build a team build systems build processes but none nobody breaks that down so tell me a little bit about your team how did you break that down how did you start creating some systems and processes in your business great, great question uh, and it's still a work in progress oh, wait. <laughs> just to be real, like for real and you know systems and processes and like all that honestly just naturally is not my strength you know i can market i can sell we can get clients and like you know we can do content and all that type of stuff but like systems and processes like i'm still learning still a learning curve and stuff like that uh so we have a good number of team members now i think i got like probably eight or so uh and we don't have any actual employees yet uh looking to bring on some w2 soon uh but we have contractors you know we got you know a few a good number of contractors uh, i got you know a good number of marketers facebook ad people project managers admins you know all that type of stuff and you know it's a work in progress you know we're definitely just trying to um make it better uh our man keon says yeah definitely need systems and teams that scale <laughs> yeah definitely 
Um, so, you know, but at some point, like you have to have a team to scale. So that's what I realized, you know, in my financial business, I never, we didn't really make that much revenue. Like we think we got to maybe five figures. So I never got a chance to like bring people on or hire people and stuff like that. Uh, but in my agency, you know, once I started making enough money, I realized I can't build every funnel. Like there's no way we can scale if every single funnel has to come through me. So nowadays, actually people don't even, not a lot of people know this, but I don't build no funnels. <laughs> I'm the <laughs> funnel guy. I lay out the vision and I tell my team what to do and where everything should go, but I'm not actually building it. You know, we have developers, we got designers, we got all that type of stuff. Uh, and I give them clear instructions on how we want it built. I still have the creative eye, but I don't build anything. You know, so once it got to that point, I was like, all right, once I started making like a week, uh, when I used to make a month, I was like, okay, I think I still have enough money now where I can actually hire people. I can get more team members. We can actually grow and scale. And that's been one of the keys to growing and scaling is having enough people and spending, you know, more money on marketing and advertising so we can get more clients too. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you said a key word there. And, um, and it was project manager. Like you said, building the systems and process wasn't your strong suit. It wasn't mine either. Where, you know, now we tell our clients, hey, you know, make a business plan actually you know see out this plan make a quarterly plan so that's a lot of advice we give and the reason that i give that advice me personally is because i never did that and we just threw stuff together and i purchased a franchise i was 25 years old when i purchased this this office that was originally for a franchise purposes and so in a national brand franchise that for legal purposes i can't name but um i purchased a franchise so they gave us an outline of how to do things but we still kind of didn't understand this i was 25 years old i was a baby you know <laughs> um, tens of thousands of dollars trying to just figure it out and what i noticed is that i also did not have that strength of uh systems and processes and hiring an operations manager or in your case a project manager because your clients are more project based even understanding like what is my business am i a service provider am i a product am i a physical product am i a digital product and kind of like mapping those things out because had i known that in the beginning in the first two years maybe i would have saved myself tens of thousands of dollars and you know all of these expenses that we that we would invest in trying to make certain things work when there really wasn't a process in place or there really wasn't an expert in place to kind of see us and guide us through so we learned a lot of things the hard way or I learned a lot of things the hard way and so that's why I think I'm able to with my brain kind of see things in now seven years later and see things in a position where we can assist other business owners um, and I think the biggest problem with business owners, and I have a post coming out, I think next week that my team curated for me. And the post says, you know, um, it says entrepreneurs specifically, let's normalize, uh, let's normalize having hundreds of thousands of dollars put up before we have a hundred thousand dollar plus lifestyle and i right. think that a lot of newer smaller business owners newer entrepreneurs i'm seeing them make money and that's amazing and they're coming on board and they're making money but they're spending money just as much as they're making and so i really want to sit them down like how profitable are you really what are you doing this for if you're doing this for to eventually give yourself some type of finance financial freedom well hey that comes with a plan that doesn't come with just because your business made a hundred grand. Now you're going to go live at the Avalon for four grand a month and <laughs> I have a $1,500 a month car. And that doesn't, that doesn't mean that like your company's money is not your money. What you need to do is build a well-oiled machine, take whatever revenue that's coming from that machine, pay your expenses and reinvest that into your business so that eventually it can pay you a salary. And so a lot of even business owners, they're not set up to even pay themselves a salary they're not set up their business foundation is even set up they 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 contact us hey can we get some business funding we want some lines of credit we want access to cash and you know they don't even have an llc or they don't have an llc with you know it's more than 12 months of maturity or they don't have any banking relationships with the llc that they had and they were open a bank account and so there's a lot of different um, gaps of communication where, hey, they just don't know what to do. And I love being part of this conversation because I think that 
from myself and my experience and my friends like you, we have so much experience that we kind of want to give them that additional information because they need it. And I want you guys to really, you know, go through all everything that you're doing now, especially now in quarter four, and fix all the things that you need to fix going into 2022. And a lot of that is going to be um, being able to be real with yourself with where you are now, your business goals, your revenue goals, where eventually you want to get to and kind of working your way backwards. Um, and I think that that was one of the most, for me, when I really started planning stuff out, that was one of the mo mo that was one of the most cha life changing things in my business because as we started planning things out, we actually had a map for how we were going to get to you know half a million and then to seven figures and 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 it and it's been a journey not just because we planned it it's just happened no it has definitely been a journey so I want you guys to really start to consider working with the professionals that are going to help you when you first get started you need a lawyer yeah. you need you need to understand how your funds are you need to be legally protected if you're going to start to bring on employees you need to know what that budget is going to be for your salary how much you can afford you know um if you're going to start paying yourself you need to know how much you can afford to pay yourself you're, ne you're going to need to do all these things to re remain compliant and then you know I know everyone wants to expense everything under the sun and not pay any taxes, which we always want to help you guys pay the least amount of tax liability. But at some point, guys, we're going to have to pay taxes. We're going to have to show income. You can't walk into a bank and ask them to give you $100,000 on a $20,000 tax return. They're not going to, you know, and then you can go no docs. You know, you can go on a no doc loan and try to do that. But guess what? Your interest rate is going to be higher. And all of the things that you're doing with all of these deductions that you're trying to write off and write off, it really puts yourself at a deficit because you can't play with the big boys. Mm. Guess what? They always have tax returns that say 500000 on them. Mm. They don't want to pay tax. I'm sure they don't want to pay tax on 500000 but they could take their return and walk into the bank and get a million dollar line of credit and start to take back some of that money and reinvest it and move it around. Mm. You know, and I think that where business owners now learned the most were I think that in the year of COVID and all of these loan programs that came out, that's when they really learned the most. Like, you need to get your shit together. And I'm sorry, excuse my French. <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> but I think that they learned that because, hey, when, you know, your EIDL loan went off of your credit, no one knew it was going to go off of your credit. And guess what? If you have a Verizon collection for a thousand bucks, do you think that SBA or even a bank for a line of credit is going to want to give you 50K? You can't even pay a thousand dollar cable note. They're not going to give it to you because they're deeming how financially responsible you are by your credit. And then on top of that, by the amount of income that you're actually claiming every year, they're going to deem what you can afford. They are not going off the money that's in your shoebox in your uh, in your bedroom. They're going off of the amount that you have reported to the IRS and state tax departments, and they're going to go off that amount to see how much you can afford a loan for or how much you can afford a property for. And there's a lot of things that tie into that. So organizing our personal finances and then taking that same organization and moving it into our business finances is something that entrepreneurs, especially us that are first generation entrepreneurs, where a lot of us are first generation American, right? Our parents were immigrants and migrated to America. So a lot of us are first generation American. And then to be first generation American already put us behind, but then to be first generation American and then first generation entrepreneur, we don't have this information. So a lot of the entrepreneurs that look like me and you don't know what they're doing. And then they're too prideful to even ask for help too. And I hate that part. I have to, like people, People cut, like they're scared to come to me and tell me they're a mess. I'm like, that's what I'm here right. for. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but that's yeah. Information though, like definitely. And I'm glad like you're doing this work for people. You're doing great work. Like people definitely need it. Cause like you said, like just cause you make a hundred thousand in your business, like that doesn't mean that's a hundred thousand dollars that you made. Right. You may be making less than you even made in your job and stuff like that. Right. Um, so the first year here, we generated a hundred and ten thousand dollars. You know how much I went home with? How much? Negative five thousand yeah. dollars. Negative. We purchased the franchise. I had a partner. 
So we went half on everything. We purchased the franchise. We, put, we got the storefront. We got the signage. We got payroll. We got everything up and running. We were, we did like maybe like three, 400 clients that first year. We generated $110,000 that first tax season. And I still went home and negative <laughs> and still had to go back and hustle for the rest of the year because our business was just seasonal and figure it out. And the first two years of my business was like that. It was so, so flaky up and down rocky. And I had to really figure out, okay, how can I build a well-oiled sustainable machine? Because I was always running numbers from the beginning. I'm an analytics person you know, operations and getting together Google Docs, and that's not my thing. But like pulling reports, really deep diving into what has happened, right? What happened in the last quarter? What happened in the last 12 months? What happened last year? What is the percentage of this? What is like, that's what I like to do. And I think that's how I ended up here. But um, I remember pulling our reports and being like, wow, we made all that money and I'm still negative $5,000. <laughs> and we still have to pay rent for the rest of the year. <laughs> So um, it was crazy. Yeah, but we lost a lot to the franchise and the franchise deal went bad. So we ended up losing <clears throat> like $25,000 on just that. It was a bunch of stuff, but um, I would not change any of it though, because a lot of those um, losses or failures, what I felt like were at the time, it allowed us, it allowed me to gain the experience and gain the knowledge. And um, and now I see a lot of new tax pros coming onto the scene and I can already see kind of like what they're doing incorrectly. They're like, no, you shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's not right either. Um, but I'm excited to kind of more package up my knowledge and really give it out. Cause I give a lot of free knowledge, my YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff, but I'm really want to make something that is like a take home book that you can read and go back and restudy and revisit and things like that. So I'm actually in the works with a publisher now, but yeah I'm, I'm super excited how was your journey with your success and and your finances and 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 what did that look like for you yeah it was a lot um i mean i think in general me having the finance background definitely give me the give me the advantage you know so when i first started my business in 2016 like it was hard <laughs> like i'm gonna be real like it was really really hard uh, I just left my job like cold turkey. I just didn't want to work in corporate no more. I was tired of it. I was like, yo, I'm out. Like, I'd rather like literally be homeless than have to deal with this shit because it was like really stressful at the time. Uh, so I just left, you know, but I had, you know, money saved. I had my 401k. I had some investments and stuff that I had to uh, tap into and uh, take the money out of. Yep. Uh, but when I first got started, like I literally, like you said, we first generation entrepreneurs. So I didn't know anything about business. You know, when I grew up about making money, it's like you go get a job or you do something illegal, uh, which I did do uh, <laughs> back in the day. But um, so when I first started, though, like I knew nothing about business. So I was like, you know, I had a finance company. I knew, you know, what I was passionate about. I knew who he wanted to serve, but it was like, how do we make money? You know, so like I said, for, you know, even when I first met you, you know, I really wasn't making that much money. You know, I knew what I was passionate about. I had a voice. I was trying to get things out there, but we weren't really generating money on a consistent basis. Um, so it was difficult, um, but I really started just learning, you know, how to make money. I was learning, you know, digital marketing. I was going to conferences. I was hiring coaches. I was getting around people, getting in different circles. Um, so that's really was the main shift was like getting around people who were already where I'm trying to go. So that's like a big at the conference in Atlanta where um did you go to that Atlanta Which one? conference? The first one Will spoke at. I think I did. I think yeah. That's where we met. But go ahead, sorry. Yeah. To I think so. I think that's where. But you know, that was like a big shift for me. Um, was just actually trying to learn how to make money and stuff like that. Uh, so when I first launched my book in like 2018, uh, that's when I started making like consistent money. And that's when I started learning like funnels and like, oh, you sell it for free, but you upsell them. And then started learning Facebook ads and like, you know, get doing like affiliate marketing and like that type of stuff. So that's when I was like, all right, we went from making like no money to like, all right, at least we're making like, three, 4,000 a month, you know what I mean? At the time, it's like, it's something coming in. Yeah. Uh, but I seen at the time, once I started spending money on marketing and that type of stuff, cost of goods, I looked at my numbers, I was, we're actually losing money. <laughs> so I was seeing money come in. I'm like, are we getting these strike payments and that type of stuff? But when I started looking at my back end numbers, we were actually losing a lot of money. You know, when I started calculating everything, 
Um, but, you know, I just kept going and just kept putting different stuff out, um, building relationships. Uh, and then I made a decision. I was like, all right, I want to actually do an agency. So for me, and that was like two, three years ago now, uh, making that shift, like that was the biggest shift for me was actually switching my business model and really getting crystal clear on what I did, a new brand, you know, new logo, funnel doctor, you know, people, it seemed like a household name now, that's what people know me as. Uh, but that was like a big shift. But having that business experience prior to that definitely helped me. Mm. So even though it was a new venture, you know, and it was like, you know, new avatar, new clients, like a whole new business model, having business experience in what I did before helped a lot. Mm. So that's why. Really key that I don't want to cut you off, but I definitely want to jump in there. And so the part where you said I got really crystal clear and a lot of entrepreneurs today, they see this internet gurus, right? And they, it looks like it's so easy to get to six figures. It's really not. Your first 100,000 is really hard. Even though I just told you I made it my first year, it's, listen, it is the hardest. Making your first 100,000 is the hardest. The only reason it was a little easier for us is because we purchased a franchise, so we already had kind of like a business model slash plan. It is the hardest. So I'm like, I, I like to keep it all the way real with everyone. It is the hardest. And then getting to 500,000 is the next level of hard. We're talking about extreme difficulty. And then getting to the seven figures is even harder. And so every level is a new devil. It requires you to pull and push and push yourself. But I see so many of you guys, new business owners, and now at you guys are ready to give up because things aren't working in year two or year three or year four. But guess what? We all did that. We were all ready to give up in those years. In those, <laughs> Definitely. But the only difference is that we had tenacity. So instead of actually closing down the company, what we did was go back to the drawing board. And people are afraid to go back to the drawing board because now they're in the second year or third year. Or in, or in my case, I went back to the drawing board the fourth year, the fifth year. I'm in year <laughs> seven, okay? Every year I hit back a drawing board to change a piece. But that's because I'm not afraid to rebrand or revision or re-strategize because the plan doesn't change is maybe how we get to the plan will change and him really saying he got crystal clear is a big problem that a lot of us have and we've experienced but we kind of made it through we pushed our way through and getting crystal clear takes doing things wrong for you to really understand what is right for you what is right for you, what is right for your company, what is right for your team, and what is the right decision to make. And a lot of the times, these decision-making skills, we aren't born with. Because again, we don't know what's right, what's wrong when we're going through and experiencing and learning. And so him getting crystal clear, him being able to say that and communicate that in a transparent way of saying, hey, you know, I didn't have it all figured out. I changed my business model. And on top of changing my business model, I had to really nitpick down to what are we going, what are we doing this for? Who are we serving? Who are we trying to serve? And we all have to do that with within our lives in general, mm -hmm. right? There's so many of us that coast in our lives and we have problems either professionally or personally or whatever type of issues that we're, that we're currently facing. A lot of the time, we don't want to re-strategize how we are doing things you know, um how we're, how we're attacking things how we're showing up in the world how we're communicating to our peers a lot of the times changes need to be made and the most the the best adults and the most successful people that i've come across they are very adaptable and they're able to adapt to different circumstances different um environments and they're able to switch it up and kind of just keep it going keep it going mm -hmm. keep it going no downtime no time wasted and it's all so product market fit <laughs> so just seeing like putting something out there and like seeing what the market responds to did we lose you again doing the financial business you know just being real like people aren't as excited about learning financial stuff <laughs> you know what I mean? Like for business owners, a little bit different. You know, we business owners, so we make money like, you know, accountants and stuff like that. Like we need accountants. We need that type of stuff. But just in general, if you're saying like, hey, you should actually not spend your money at the mall. Or if you do, take some of it and put it into a stock. Generally, you know, people are listening. People are getting more aware now. But generally, like it's harder to get people to like buy into that. 
Um, so like I said, just putting something out into the marketplace and, you know, getting people to buy something is like a lot harder in that niche. Um, and I noticed that, you know, when I started doing marketing and funnels and being clear on that and knowing who our avatar is and, you know, um, what type of business owners we want to go after, it's a huge market for it, <laughs> you know? So that's something you have to notice as well. And me working with a lot of different businesses. I've worked with tons of businesses, six figure, seven figure, beauty brands, accountants, service providers and stuff like that. And for new business owners, I think a lot of us get too caught up in, you think it's a good idea, but that doesn't mean people are going to pay for it. <laughs> because when you're putting it out there and putting a new product out there, a new service out there, and it's not taking off like you thought, you got to test the market. Like you got to see how how people are going to respond to it are people going to buy it or not or you can't get bent out of shape if they don't you got to switch it up you got to pivot you got to see what people are already paying for and if you're putting something out there that there's not already a market for i think that's a mistake so that's just another pitfall i see with new business owners too is they get too caught up on the idea and what they think are going to work but when they put it out there like you got to actually see what people are paying for and what the market responds to mm, that's some gems right there that's true that's true. A lot of the times business owners will create their business concept off of what they think will sell, like you just said, and not what is their market for. And they'll go around their own schedules. And <laughs> and um, that's not a, a real strategy, right? You need to understand who your customer is, like what he said, and how you're going to market to them. And marketing is literally the juice. Like, I don't know who said this, but the, the the marketer with the most money always wins. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, yeah. And that, that's why it is so important to manage your finances, right? Because you do have to, I tell people, my, my rule of thumb for our clients is whatever your profit is, 20% go back to marketing. Yeah. And that's because marketing is what's going to bring your business in front of a lot of, in front of a lot of, faces the more faces that you're in front of the more chances you have to convert and i think it's a rule of advertising of thumb and you can correct me if i'm wrong but someone a consumer needs to see your product seven times mm -hmm. before you actually decide to yep. buy and so they can't see you seven times if you are not constantly putting back that dollar into being able to be seen once maybe a second maybe a third and you know even my friends are my friends now but they may not be entrepreneurs they don't know but they'll say oh carmen i'm tired of seeing you on instagram oh, every time i go on i see a video of you and so they make fun of me but they don't get it yes i i do post three times a day yes we want to post a gazillion videos yes even the ones that don't look great i just be like put them out there um and that's because i understand what i'm building up to and you they don't great content by the way oh thank you <laughs> I, for me and content have a a little a war battle every week <laughs> <laughs> i can't we can't tell on the outside <laughs> then honey it has been a struggle okay <laughs> and everyone's been telling me for years because i i came on to social media and started building my brand around 2017 i think we met around that same time and i was doing amazing 2017 2018 i was throwing financial literacy events i was public speaking i did 22 speaking engagements in like 12 14 months or something it was like crazy um and between my events and guest hosts and all these things i had did all this stuff right however my my back end systems and processes weren't set up. So I was getting in front of all these people and I was building all this audience and I had all this brand awareness. However, I didn't have anything on the back end set up to really convert them. Not to mention our business was, we were profitable at the time. Um, and I actually had two storefront locations at the time versus one that I have now, but the, it wasn't set up. It wasn't timed right. And I was dumping a bunch of money into marketing and content creation, but I didn't have a full vision or a plan on what was going to happen next. How were we going to funnel doctor them into just being someone that viewed us and watched us to being actually someone that wanted to work with us and convert us and what that looked like. Mm -hmm. And so, and building out those pieces, you know what I had to do where everyone else was like, don't stop, write a book, do this, do these. I was like, nah, I went completely ghost. You, I got, did. <laughs> you definitely did. <laughs> I went completely ghost. I got all the way off the internet and said, I'm going to figure this stuff out. And I went back to my drawing board. And that year, I saw almost a 100% increase in, in revenue. That wow. 
12 months because I put, put my head down. I stopped comparing myself to everyone else on social media that were my peers at the time. They literally were my peers. So, and some of the biggest influencers are my peers. I have multiple multi-million dollar people in my phone that I call for advice. And so, and they'll all co-sign me too. <laughs> but I don't need, I didn't need at the time, I didn't need the clout. I needed to figure out how to make content creation something that would tie it into my business that made and fuel and fueled me not only passionately but also fueled my company and that was a lot of the things that we did wrong in that time and so i spent all this gazillion dollars i shipped thousands and thousands tens of thousands of dollars into kind of building it up and we all did it for nothing because we couldn't really convert them and now when i came back online i'm just like listen i do not come to play but i need to go through those failures to kind of figure out what how to do it correctly now um and and if i had listened to the outside noise i would have just kept going online and maybe i would have figured it out as i went but me that whole fake it till you make it thing has never been um i where i come up was where i come from we have ogs and they make their money they go home they don't talk about it they're not a pump fake till you right right yeah right I do not believe in that. And so when I come back and I say certain things, it's because not only have I known it and experienced it, but I've also touched it. So when we talk about managing hundreds of thousands of dollars or actually getting some figures, like these are things that I've actually touched, done. I can walk into a bank and get a quarter million dollars tomorrow check if I wanted to. These are things I've actually done successfully and now just want to share back my knowledge with those that are like me, that were lost when I was 25, 26, 27, 28. I'm 32 now. Now you can't fool me. You can't bamboo <laughs> me. I <don't. laughs> but yeah, I feel like this turned into a lot of failures and losses and lessons conversation. Wait, yeah, right, wins and losses, right? <laughs> but that's no, that's great. Like you're doing great work, and I like I like what you said about uh, knowing how to convert people. Because I have a lot of private conversation with influencers and that type of stuff. Like, oh, I got all these followers. I got likes. I got comments. I got shares but I don't have my back end. I'm not actually getting customers. I have no email list. I have no list and that type of stuff. So I think that's extremely important. And that really all is what funnels are, you know, getting to be able to attract people and convert them into clients or customers. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, we don't own these social media platforms. So as we saw when Facebook and Instagram shut down a couple weeks ago, if your business is only dependent on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or whatever, you in trouble. <laughs> so, uh, I truly believe, you know, you definitely want to, you know, give good content, give good value. But at the end of the day, you want to have a call to action to get people into your world and actually have them become customers. Anytime I do, I do a lot of presentations. I just did one like yesterday talking about social media and ads and stuff like that. And I'm always saying like likes do not equate into sales. <laughs> Followers do not equate into customers. You can turn some into customers, uh, but I use social media, you know, besides the, the personal stuff is to get more customers and get in front of more people. Definitely got to be in front of them, you know, up to seven times for them to take action. Uh, the uh, marketer with the most money or who can spend the most money to acquire customers is the one that will win. Uh, so yeah, like he said, that is Dan Kennedy has said that. But um, yeah, you definitely hit the nail on the head. And I just want to commend you for the great work, figuring it out, helping people, you know, with the business finances and that type of stuff, because uh, people need it. Like people need it. Like a lot of seems like it's getting worse with the Instagram celebrity type stuff and people trying to stun and you know renting cars and private planes and that type of stuff. And nothing wrong with that. Uh, but you know I like to keep it real. Like the people that I know with real money, they not out flashing it and all that type of stuff. They don't. They don't move that way. People with like real money. Yeah, they don't. And and when you have real money, you don't want people to know that. Like, right. thank you. <laughs> right. You don't. You don't want to think about walking into somewhere you have to look around mm -hmm. you know i live in new york i don't want to go to the club and have to worry and think about you know who's going to follow me home and i've been followed home mm -hmm. and it was a, it was a time and it was not too far from my office so i'm pretty sure they recognized who i was and and i've i've experienced those things where you know for safety precaution reasons like you don't like and, and that's why I never built my brand on, hey, I, and you'll notice that if you go back to any of my content from the last four years, I had never said, hey, I made this amount of money. Come, let me show you how to right. make this. Yeah, I, right. 
hate that tag marketing line because it shouldn't be about how much I made. It should be one, how, how I can help you. And just because I made that amount, and I want you guys that are listening to this, just because I made that amount does not mean that you can make that amount. I can have the same amount of um, investment. You can have the same amount of money. You can have the same recipe. You can have the same everything. That does not guarantee that you will make the same amount of revenue that I did with all my tools and with all my resources. Because every person is going to produce different results. And that's why I don't believe in that marketing line because it's not true. And there's a lot of people that then buy into the line or the gimmick, right, for this for these purposes is a gimmick. And they'll say, hey, this is a scam. It's not a scam. It's the fact that you believe that it's a gimmick that you bought into. You believe that you <laughs> think that someone else has, but it doesn't, that doesn't guarantee results. Like look at the franchise, the tax franchises. They give you the business model, but there's still franchises that operate at a 20% profit margin. And then there are franchises that operate at a 40% profit margin, which is really healthy for a retail storefront location. Right. So what's the difference then there's storefront locations that make 150,000 and there's storefront locations that make 575 what's the difference the, the resources yeah the strategies yeah but the producer the, the team members the employees the location the marketing that there's so many different plays on how things can work out that doesn't it's never going to guarantee you your results just because something i did and so that's why i never use it in any of my marketing um because i never really believed it and you made a really good point when you said uh, people don't know how to convert because that is the biggest problem a lot of the times we'll get in front of customers and we don't know even what the difference between marketing and advertising is marketing and advertising are two totally different things yeah. and Ryan, elaborate on that what's the difference between marketing and advertising i would say and i'm probably not the best to articulate because i know it so much like it's hard for me to explain it <laughs> yeah. you know but like advertising like for me like facebook and like ad, like all that's like advertising like facebook you know buying media could be billboards, it could be TV, could be radio, could be, you know, uh, magazines and that type of stuff. So like those are forms of advertising. Like my favorites right now are like Facebook, Instagram ads, like we spend a good number uh, amount of money every month on ads that uh, Facebook bills come pretty quick. Um, so I would say like that's like advertising It's like, you know, uh, media buying or like getting, you know, uh, spending money to like get in front of people. Uh, and then we talk about like marketing, I would say that's like, you know, when you hit people like via email or like text messages, like SMS, um, you know, putting different content out like this or something like this, this will be could be considered content marketing or something like that. Um, so that's kind of how I would kind of, you know, uh, break it down and stuff like that. Um, and I don't like to be really aggressive with marketing because uh, I truly believe that if you believe in what you offer, what you sell, your product or service, you have a moral obligation to sell it. I know a lot of people that are business owners, when it comes to selling, sometimes it's like, oh, I don't want to sell. I don't want to be sleazy, like, you know, all that type of stuff. You know, people will get kind of scared about it. But I truly believe you're not selling anything. If you are a business owner, you are solving a problem. So you solve a major problem for people, which is managing their finances. That's a major problem that people have, you know, making sure the books are good, bookkeeping, accounting, and that type of stuff. So you don't have to necessarily sell anybody on anything. You provide a solution. Mm -hmm. You know, people come to me like they feel overwhelmed. Uh, you know, they don't know how to do this online stuff. They may not be tech, spe uh, tech people and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I'm not like selling anything. We're actually solving the major problem that people have. So, you know, that's how I feel. But marketing, advertising definitely can be different. Yes, no, definitely. How I would say is like a advertising is yes, paid ads, like what you said. Advertising could also be location, visibility. A lot of advertising is kind of like the old school guerrilla marketing, like the all that. We do a lot of direct mail mailing campaign here in our community for our retail storefront location, which has actually been one of our top. Um, That's the old church. It, no more, no more. it does it does work actually we did a direct mail campaign which i don't know if i want to drop these gems but we did a direct mail campaign 
last year and our strategy behind the campaign was to send out fake checks and it was actually one of the most like profitable campaigns and it was pretty pricey too it was like i think we reached like 13,000 homes but it was like eight grand 13,000 homes two times though um so we did two drops because back to the seven times um so we did two drops and each time they we did a drop we had like a wave of like 500 calls coming in a day like 400 calls come, like our call center was just like couldn't stop and thank God we even had the call center in play because we had the full thing. Okay, this was gonna happen here, then this is what's gonna happen here, and then right after that, this was gonna happen. So we had that full funnel, like he says. It's not, maybe not be the same funnel because it's not digital marketing, but we had a funnel set up of what would happen next. After someone could, let's say the check did what did do well, when they actually got got that piece of information, if they called us or contact us, how would we convert them? What the person that, that from the call center that's going to answer the call? What is their script? What do they do? How do they close? Then to the next stage, and so those are all workflows, and that's that's what a really system and process actually is. It's a workflow that has steps in which you guide your customer from being the lead to actually converting to be a customer and honestly that campaign did really well like our call volume was crazy like the week that it went through our call volume was hundreds of calls per day where normally we would just be between 100 and 200 during taxes our phones ring crazy um but we would our call volume would be normally between 100 to 200 the direct mailer weeks they were like 300 375 425 one day it even got over five and it was like it was like wow and and I saw, because people want money, so when they think that they got a check, everyone's calling, I got this check in the mail, is this a mistake? I got this check in the mail, where do I cash it? I got this check in the mail, I got to come to you to cash it? And everyone had questions about this check. So it wasn't the actual direct mailer, but it was the strategy behind it, right? And so all of those pieces, to go back to my point, that is marketing, right? The actual mailing campaign is a form of advertising, but the concept behind how we put it together, the color scheme of the flyer, the thought behind the flyer, what the, the, the copyright of the flyer, all of those things is what actually put it together to make sense. So those are marketing tactics that was added into an advertising campaign. Those are two very different things. You could have a great advertisement and it looks shitty because yeah. it because you didn't use the right marketing tactics, right? Because you didn't use the right marketing strategy. A piece of advertisement isn't a strategy. It's a form of advertisement. It's a piece of advertisement. But what goes behind it, all the science pieces of the puzzle, that is the actual marketing. And so that is a difference. They're two very different things. I see people advertise on billboards, um, and they may not necessarily even be ready to advertise on billboards, but they think because they get this billboard, they're going to get all these numbers. And guess what? They may not get the numbers because the, the, the creative piece may not be right, or the timing on where they put it may not be right, or where they actually pieced it at may not be right. So much of it is... Is, 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 is a science behind it. And that's why it makes sense to work with experts. And even when developing your business, to invest in a coach and to do you know business consultations, speak to as many people as possible that are, are where you want to be. Don't speak to people that just go online every day because a lot of these people that go online every day and that is their business. They don't actually run businesses. They don't actually run teams. They run content. <laughs> so I want a lot of you guys to be aware of that and really understand and really start investing into yourselves with who and understand who you're working with, right? Social media side, what have you done outside? Have you generated revenue? Have you hit revenue goals? Do you understand the information knowledge I need to learn? Um, have you been there? Experience is the best teacher. So if I fucked up $100,000 10 times, guess what? I might have all the experience in the world for you. <laughs> you know? Um, and that's going to be where you're going to learn the most from. I feel like I went on a little bit of a rant there. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Uh, that uh that uh Craig Mills was like it like it like it uh medical marketing 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 once i really marketing marketing change change like uh because like
because uh, like you know your left, know your left action, action. I think like, you're like, breaking oh. up. I don't know if that's just for me or for everyone, but you're breaking up on my end. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. now I can. Okay. I don't know. What, I don't know what. Uh, uh, got a few more. more. Also, also. Can you hear can you me? Hear me good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I'm I'm really, really back, back, March, March, March. Um, oh, in your, oh, in your, in your or I had a, or I had a, like, like call, call. You know, you know. So that is, so that is, so, uh, uh, but, sure exactly. Exactly. but I know, but I know with you, you, um, you um, um, and you broke that, and you broke that, thousand mark. It's like you, it's like you say, advertising, advertising, marketing is. That doesn't, that doesn't mean. mean the, 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 Patience good. Patience good. So, so that is that is I think. I think so after um, um, sexy. Mm, I heard like half of that. It was like chunky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Is that just me, guys, or can you hear him correctly? Can you guys hear him? It might just be me. Anyone that's watching, is he breaking up for you guys too? all right well it's about to be six anyways and so let's just for those of you that are interested um for anyone on this live or tuning in i am giving away a 15 minute free business consultation if you're interested in um getting your business finances together and kind of just want to pick my brain really quickly about what you should do if you're interested in working with us here at straight tax my name is carmen mohan you can just go click the link in my bio or send me a dm that you want to have a conversation it'll be a 15 20 minute conversation free of charge um, so any of you are interested in that, reach out to me. And then Ryan, tell the people where they can find you. Uh, you can find, find all the all of them. Uh, uh, but, 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 um, anybody that, anybody that is, it, 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 it will be for her, you can just, just DM me, DM me like, like any, like, buy it, uh, click uh, something, something like that. Uh, you, uh, you, you probably will start seeing me too, too. So we're going to, so we're going to read, uh, uh but. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for coming on here. Today is Finance Fridays, and that is a wrap. Thank you, guys. <laughs>